So we're going to talk about Etsy Keeper. So uh, first of all, I want to give credit. Uh, the author of Etsy Keeper is Joey Hess. And generally, if Joey Hess created some software, it's worth checking out. Uh, he's done a lot of great tools over the years. Uh, here's a small selection of the tools that he's done. Uh, Git Annex will let you keep uh, binary images in, or binary files in uh, Git. We'll talk about it in a second that, that Git doesn't do that very well. Um, IkiWiki is a text-based uh, wiki tool. Uh, KeySafe is a thing for saving passwords. He's done some really cool stuff over the years. Um, and Etsy Keeper is my favorite right now. Um, but it's definitely whenever I see his name on something, I'm like, ooh, that's worth checking out. Uh, and he was also a Debian developer for a number of years. And you can see a couple of different Debian tools that he did, that he created as well. A uh, couple of statements of facts. Uh, I'm presuming most people here know that Etsy holds a system configuration for a uh, Unix or Linux-based system. Uh, and then also that changes inside of Etsy can affect system behavior and performance, uh, including to the negative if you go through and mess things up. Uh, so it's important to be able to track what changes have been taking place inside of your system configuration, uh, especially if you have kind of things that don't show up for a couple weeks uh, that uh, until the bug appears uh, and yet takes services down. So we really want to keep an eye on what's going on there. Uh, that's why I like Etsy Keeper. It allows me to track what's going on inside there and uh, um, be able to keep, keep track of you know, uh, things. All right. uh, so what is it? It's part of a nutritious backup solution. It is not the only thing for backups. If you're using Etsy Keeper on your local system and your disk crashes and takes all the data with it, you shall still have no data because uh, it's saving it locally. Uh, so uh, you need to do other things to make sure you've got backups. Um, but this is a really good tool. Uh, for those of you that do database stuff, uh, you need to, to, you can't just back up the file system with the database on it. You have to, to, to quiesce the database or do something else in order to do the backup properly uh, because the, the file on disk might not be uh, accurate. Uh, this is kind of thing for like, like that where we're keeping different versions of, of our configurations, uh, but it's not the sole part of the backups. Uh, so what it does. It safely, completely, and consistently puts Etsy into version control. I'll cover what version control is in a second. Um, and in, an important part of it is it works with many version control systems. So you don't have to use just one. Now, I mentioned Git. That is the preferred version control system. Joey will tell you that. His documentation tells you that. Um, if you use some other system, it will work. Um, but it is not as well tested as Git is. So he recommends using Git. Uh, and if uh, some distribution is foolishly using their own version control system instead of Git, he will tell you that they're making a mistake. Um, but you can use their system if you, if you prefer. Um, but those of you that don't work for that company, you usually don't have to. All right. Uh, so version control system. So they track changes to files. So if I, if I have a file, I've, I check it in. I can make changes to it and check it in again. So now I have, I have a ver both copies of the file, essentially. Uh, it works great on text files. Um, and you can see the, version, the, the differences between the versions. So if I change the file today, I can compare what it looked like yesterday or three months ago. Um, and then they're not great on binary files, uh, just because binary files don't diff so well, most binary file formats. So for images, for compressed files, things like that, uh, the steganography that Yale was talking about doesn't work so well on that. Uh, although if you break the text out, you know, we, can, we can keep your secret messages in, in revision control. Um, it does allow uh, retrieving a specific version. So spe the example here is I can pull the March 4th, 2014 networking configuration back out of the VCS. Uh, now safely, I, I, uh, I mentioned, I forgot to, to say. So I mentioned safely, completely, and consistently. I'm going to get to all of them, but we're going to have a couple sidetracks because that's how I do things. All right, safely. So you don't want to accidentally uh, expose some files. So Etsy Shadow has your encrypted password uh, in that, you don't want to post that publicly. Uh, you also don't want backups to go through and make that uh, available to people that don't need access to them. Uh, yes, they're encrypted, but uh, especially with the tools that uh, Yale, Yale was mentioning from Mr. Robot, they've shown us that you can break encrypted passwords, uh, especially if you don't do a good job of, of uh, choosing a good hash and so forth. Um, so we want to protect that. The, the permissions I show. Uh, is the Git directory where Etsy Keeper will keep its, its uh, versioning information. 
and it makes sure that it's owned by root, grouped by root, and that the permissions are 700, so root is the only, the only user that has access. Um, so that you don't have to worry about somebody else getting a copy of it. If you make a copy of this directory, though, for backups or other reasons, we'll cover that in a, little, in a, in a second, uh, you want to make sure that you also have good permissions wherever you copy that backup. Because if you copy that backup and post it somewhere publicly, then people have copy of, of, that, of that directory. Uh, so you'll, you still need to protect it uh, elsewhere. Uh, so let me tell you a story about a little tool called NetSync. Uh, those of you that uh, uh, are new to system administration uh, might be more familiar with the tool called Nagios. NetSync became Nagios a long time ago. Um, but back then, I was going through and uh, before Etsy Keeper exists, existed, I went through and, and copied Etsy into revision control on my own and just set it up and, and, and copied things in. Um, but one of the things that revision control doesn't do in most systems is keep track of permissions and ownership. And lo and behold, NetSync started failing and didn't log anything about what it was doing, why it was failing, which is great because NetSync is a logging tool for going through and, and checking that how services are running. So it didn't tell me how it was broken. When I turned up verbosity on it so that it would give me more information, uh, it gave me a message about petunias and watermelons. I still don't know what the heck it was talking about. Um, but I eventually figured out what happened was when I had checked the files in to revision control, it had changed the ownership and the permissions on the file. And NetSaint required that its configuration files have certain uh, um, ownership and certain permissions. Um, I haven't had to worry about NetSaint or Nagios at that level in a long time, so I just happily pretend in some happy place that this problem has gone away. But there are other tools that still are very persnickety about their permissions and ownership. So having something that changes those causes a problem. It's one of the things about Etsy Keeper is it keeps those permissions and ownership, uh, and it also tracks empty directories, which is important to some, some uh, services. Those things are not normally tracked by uh, revision control systems or version control systems. Uh, Etsy Keeper keeps a separate file and keeps that file in the revision control so that when you basically replay a file from, from uh, um, uh, out of the version control system, it will go then apply the permissions and the ownership to that file so that it puts them back. So there's two steps. There's one is restore the data, the contents of the file, and then the second step with the wrapper from Etsy Keeper is it goes through and applies the uh, permissions and ownership as well. Um, and as I say, it will also keep track of empty directories that are in, inside your configuration director, uh, um, tree uh, in case those need to come back as well. Uh, consistently. So one of the things it does is it auto-checking, check-ins, check, whatever, uh, auto-checks files in after you do uh, upgrades. So it ties into the, uh, um, your uh, package management system, uh, specifically Debian, but it works with other uh, package management systems now as well. Um, so when you do an upgrade or a package install, it will call a hook and automatically go check those changes in for Etsy Keeper. Uh, now, it also has a hook to check things in before the package update. So if you have some changes just laying around that you forgot to check in or that somebody broke in and made changes for you and didn't check in, then the package update will check those in. So if you want to be extra paranoid, you want to make sure you want to go look at logs and find out if there were changes that were checked in as part of the upgrade that weren't upgraded packages. Um, ignores. It uses your normal VCS system for ignores. Uh, so if you've got a file that you don't want checked into the version control system for some reason, uh, you can set that up in your uh, whatever your normal ignore system is. As I say, Etsy Keeper defaults to git, so we'll use etsy.gitignore. Um, or you can put it in the git directory under configurations. Um, so however you would normally do ignore files, you can do with uh, Etsy Keeper as well. Uh, the setup is easy. Uh, you do a sudo Etsy Keeper init to go through and, and create it to begin with. It'll create the revision control directory and uh, track the files. Then you can cd into Etsy and do a sudo git commit with a message. So you can, can, can uh, commit the, the files. Uh, and then, of course, you profit because that's the fourth step in all technical uh, problems nowadays. Uh, here's an example. So I'm going through and, and uh, changing Etsy host to add my uh, next cloud server. So I don't have to remember the IP address all the time. I can just uh, um, use Nextcloud on uh, my local network. 
Um, you can see, though, that I made a mistake and, and created an IP address that isn't, uh, isn't allowed. Um, now, I want, quick question for the crowd. Uh, I don't have a sudo on the echo, but I do on the T. And then I have a typo after that. So we'll, fig we'll, we'll figure out why, talk about why I have the, the sudos there, and then discuss how I was stupid. Um, so first of all, why don't I have a sudo on the echo, and why do I have one on the T? So echo is just spitting out data, right? You don't need the sudo. Yeah, you don't need yeah. the sudo on for echo. So I, I don't need sudo to, to, to throw data into the pipe. I'm just throwing text into the pipe. But T with the dash A is appending. If without the dash A, it would wipe it out. So don't do that on Etsy host. Um, especially don't do that in password. Uh, the T will then append to that file, but it needs sudo permissions in order to do that. Uh, and then the mistake I have is that I left redirects. Which are you gonna? Oh no, I'm redirecting. Uh, um, oh no, that's why I'm doing that. I wasn't stupid. I was just smart and forgot I was. So T will also show you the data on the, on the command line. So all I was doing is throwing that out because I already know what it is. Um, but I'm using T to then get the permissions because you can't sudo the redirect. So do we mention that the IP is wrong? Well, yes, that's why I say this is this was the example I have. So the IP address is an, in, an invalid IP address. It can't be. Um, I do a diff. I show you that I'm using sudo and git. Uh, the dash capital C says change to that directory. So I don't have to cd to Etsy every time. I can just say dash c uh, Etsy. Uh, and then I'm just saying diff the, the file that I did. And I can show you the diff that the, the data was added. Um, but as Pablo has pointed out, it is an invalid IP address. So I can, but I don't. In my example here, I don't notice that until after I've committed the file. Um, so I can go through and revert, clean that back out, uh, and that'll uh, change it on the, on the disk. I can put in the correct data and then check it in again. So I'm using standard uh, uh, git commands in order to make those changes. Uh, Etsy Keeper isn't involved at all uh, if I don't want it to be. We'll get to it in a second. I can use Etsy Keeper if I want, uh, but I don't have to. Uh, so File recovery, similar to what I was just doing. I was recovering an older version of the file. But here, I accidentally remove a file. Uh, and so I can use git, again, reg regular configure, or, or, uh, the regular version control system uh, command to recover the file and put it back on the file system. Um, so I have a way of recovering if I wipe out data in Etsy. All right. Um, so this supports different version control systems. Git, as I've mentioned 15 times thus far. Um, Subversion, Mercurial, Bazaar, and Darks. Uh, so if you're stuck using one of those others, you also can, can uh, use it. Stuck, I, I shouldn't say that because they, they're all uh, fine. Um, but Git is the preferred uh, tool. So if you don't care, just use it by default, the, the Git by default. If you're on a distribution that defaults to something other than Git, you can install Git and Git Core on that particular distribution first. Uh, and then uh, Etsy Keeper will, will be able to use Git. Uh, some more usage examples. And this is where Etsy Keeper actually provides a wrapper around your version control system. Uh, so if, if for those of you that don't sit in version control systems all day long, you don't have to worry about learning this, the ins and outs of the specific version control system. Uh, you can use, use Etsy Keeper. Um, also, it can be a little bit shorter in the commands sometimes. Uh, so the first example, sudo etsy keeper commit. That goes through and commits all the file, all the changes that have been made in the Etsy directory. Um, the nice thing about this is with the wrapper that it provides, it also records the user doing the sudo. So if you're on a shared system, like at work, where you've got multiple people that have root, and they, they're logging in as themselves, not as root, right? Hopefully. Um, so when they do that commit, uh, if you just do sudo git commit, it'll record root as making the change. So you don't know who was root at the time. Uh, the Etsy Keeper wrapper will record the person who ran the sudo command uh, as opposed to run it, uh, recording root. So that's good. Uh, the next example I have is sudo Etsy Keeper VCS diff. So the VCS is the command for Etsy Keeper that says, hey, uh, run whatever your VCS system is and then give me a diff. Uh, and uh, the example I give after that then is using git directly, uh, sudo git dash c etsy diff. 
Now notice on the sudo etsy keeper command, I still had to sudo. Why did I need to sudo? Because the .git directory is locked down to only have access by root. So even though I'm on my system, etsy keeper doesn't give me access to it. I still have to have root permissions in order to run etsy keeper and look in that file. So the same thing with git, if I use git directly, I have to be running as root at the time in order to have access to that directory to see what's, what's in the version control system. Um, I can run a status. Again, I can run it via Etsy Keeper or directly via Git. Um, now, if I want to look at status for a particular directory, uh, notice that I, I need to do things a little bit differently. And uh, yeah, here I have a typo. I, that should still work, I think. Um, but I don't need uh, the, the slash Etsy slash in the uh, Etsy Keeper uh, command. Because um, it defaults to looking in Etsy, and then I'll look for the Apache 2 directory in there. Um, but you can see, in this case, the Etsy Keeper command is actually a little bit longer if you're looking at a specific file uh, within the file system. Uh, and of course, if you CD just to Etsy to begin with, they're all a little bit shorter as well. Uh, they'd also be shorter if you're running as root, but you shouldn't do that. Keep using sudo, please. All right. Uh, now, to copy a repo. Now, as I say, you've got, it, you've got this information in it, but it's still on the same disk where your files are. So if you lose that disk, you've still lost everything, right? It's not giving you a backup that take, takes care of data, you know, of, of losing the system. Um, so one of the things you can do is one, just back up Etsy, you know, back up the system and back up Etsy with your normal backups, because the files are static on the on the disk. Um, but you can also go through and clone your repo onto another system. Uh, now this file, don't worry about memorizing all this. The one will post the slides, but this is coming directly directly out of Joey's documentation. So user user local or, or user share doc Etsy keeper, and then there's a README file in there. This is directly out of there. Um, but this shows you how to to copy the the the, the uh, uh, repository onto another system. Notice one of the pieces in here though is that he chamod 700. So he changed before he checks out the the files. He creates a new directory and changes the ownership on that directory to only be own, you know, so that only the person creating the backup has access to that directory. So if you put that into temp world readable, then everybody has access to it. So you got to make sure if you're making a copy of it, continue to treat that as, as secret data because some of it is. All right. uh, and then uh, some things to investigate. Uh, if you're wanting to learn more about Git and how it works, uh, or um, Etsy Keeper, um, look at etsy.git hooks, uh, and, and I, I meant to actually put in Etsy, Etsy Keeper uh, hooks. So they have a bunch of different directories. That's where the information is for package managers, so that they've got hooks to, to go, th go through and call Etsy Keeper. Um, so I will fix that directory, another one. And then resources, this is the, the home uh, page for Etsy Keeper. Uh, it's also got Joey's other applications if you want to look at things that he's worked on. Um, and you can check out the code and, and uh, roll your own version of it, so to speak, if you'd like. All right. Any questions? No? Everybody's going to go home and install it and start using it? Yes? Thank you. All right. That's the main thing. Wait, wait. I, need com I need commitment here. This is important. <laughs> All right. I expect everybody to be here next month and tell me how your, how your uh, adventures with Etsy Keeper are going. Thank you. If you don't come to the install festival, we'll fix your system. Yeah. <laughs> if Pablos is now an expert after this presentation, he can help you recover if you've made changes. Oh, my yeah. Got a question. Oh, got a question? Yes, sir. Just uh, some potential alternatives uh, that do keep track of permissions and ownership. Uh, tools like CF Engine uh, allow you to set that. Also, uh, if you use Subversion, uh, it's not unusual to put ownership and permissions in um, metadata associated with a uh, file version. Okay, I've not run into that with Subversion. I remember disliking it greatly because I had had problems with it before. Um, I think Git actually keeps some of the, the information and, and puts it back correctly. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's manual in that yeah. you have to set up your um, you have to set up the keywords uh, to capture permissions and uh, ownership but once you do that uh, it's available and okay. you can, but yeah. it's, it's something that you, that you have to yeah. do
Okay, and I think by default both of them will strip the execute bit when they put a file back, which in most of Etsy is fine, but not in all of Etsy, including the things that help you boot. Subversion lets you, uh, it, that's one of the built-in functions of Subversion is flagging a, a file as executable. Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned uh, CF Engine. So CF Engine, Puppet, Chef, uh, Ansible, any of the configuration management systems or even orchestration systems that will go through and put things in. Uh, one of the things they, they do is you define the file, you supply the contents for the file, and they, if you set it up properly, they will verify that the uh, permissions, and the ownership, and other metadata is correct as well. Um, and basically what they're doing is saying this is what the state should be Let's do what we need to do to make it that way. And it depends on the configuration management system of that to, from point A to point B and the things you have to do to make that happen. Um, yeah, but it doesn't track changes. So uh, one of the things I mentioned is if somebody breaks into your system and makes changes on you, um, they will go, the, as long as it's a file that's under, under the configuration management, which most aren't, um, then the configuration management tool will put it back to what it should be. Um, but if they broke in and they can change it, then they can break in and change it again. And, you know, it's well, CF right. Engine will keep track of versions and you can roll back. It will if you tell it to. Um, no, the CF Engine uh, does it by configuration default? is under is in a repository itself. Either Git or Subversion. But, well, the, so the, on the master, but I mean on the, on the client. On the destination. Oh, on the, on, well, uh, the clients, of course, make the file system the way they promised it would be. Yeah. Um, so if there's a change in that, it, it would identify that there had been a change, and then it would tell you, I put it back the way it was. But if you say, I want to roll it back three versions to what I had it last June, um, it's available, and you can do that. Yeah. So at the, on the master. Yeah. From the master. From the master, yeah. So it does some of the same things. But as I say, it also only covers the things that are you specifically put into revision control. So if you've got something that you haven't been doing anything with, then it won't touch it. Um, so if you're using the default uh, 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 files from, from packages or something that was generated locally, for instance, the SSH key or something like that, host key, uh, then uh, it, it won't touch it because it doesn't know about it. Uh, yeah, it actually, actually handles SSH keys differently. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's very good about distributing SSH keys, but um, if, that if you use it, but I've worked a lot of places where we don't. Let's put it that way. Especially the host key. I actually haven't worked at a place where they do because uh, they won't listen to me. But, all right. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? No? All right. Thank you very much.